Hi guys, and it's fall again. Thank goodness. Um, I was not ready for winter last week. Um, one, because I like the fall weather. It's so pretty out here. And two, because I had a couple more projects I wanted to show you. And so, um, the first project that I'm going to show you today are the pillows that I made for our little rocking chairs that are on the potting shed. I like decorating with pillows and um, they're so easy to do and you can do so much, so many different things with them. You can embroider on them, applique, do whatever. And I have several pillows like on our porch and on our swing and here and we live in West Texas and we have 90 mile an hour wind and I don't want my pillows ending up in the bar ditch or in the neighbor's field. And so what I do is I have them anchored and so they won't blow away. So I thought I wanted to show you first just how to make these simple pillows and how to attach the strap. So I just have a strap on the back of them that anchors them to the chair or the rocking chair or your cushion or whatever. So let's go inside and I'll show you how to do it. Okay, we're ready to get started. And um, Doug ditched me. He filmed the outside part of it, but he said today was too nice of a day to be inside, so he's outside. So I'm doing this by myself, and I've set the camera up on the tripod, and the tape that I put down, I don't know if you can see that or not, um, I taped that off so I know, okay, to stay within this area so you can see what I'm doing in the camera. So I've already done this pillow. It's made. And now I'm going to work on the second pillow. And what we need to do first of all is first you get your pillow form. And that's going to determine how big you cut your fabric. So my pillow form is a 16 by 16. So a 16 inch pillow. And so I have embellished my front piece. And again, you can use whatever you want to do on your front pillow. Um, applique, embroider, just use fabric. Um, you can do cross stitch, you can paint. Decorate your pillow however you want. That's why pillows are so fun because you can, they're small canvases that you can do anything you want to on them. So I've embroidered my other design and I've cut my pillow front to a 16 by 16. I cut my front exactly the measurement of my pillow form and then I just take a quarter inch seam allowance and that just snugs up that fabric around that pillow form and make, makes it good and snug. So that's just a trick that I've always done with my pillows. So I've cut that front 16 by 16 and now my back pieces, I need it the 16 inch width but I'm going to be inserting my zipper in the middle of it and I'm going to take a half inch seam allowance and I'll explain why I do a half inch seam allowance when I insert my zipper here in a little bit and so you do the math you cut it eight eight and a half by the 16 two pieces for your back and then you decide okay how big a strap do you need and so I've cut my length and it is about 21 inches long and it's three inches wide and how I came to that measurement I want my strap to be finished one inch I'm just gonna fold this piece in half one inch and I'm gonna take a half inch seam allowance with it also and I'll explain why here in a little bit so my strap is three inches by about 21 inches then you also need a zipper, just a polyester zipper. It has to be a polyester zipper because we're going to be sewing through it. And it needs to be longer than your pillow. So this one is a 22 inch. Um, you could do an 18 inch or a 20 inch, just whatever length you can find. Um, but it needs to be longer than your pillow. And then you also need um, a piece of Velcro and it has to be the sew-in Velcro. Do not buy that sticky back Velcro because you cannot sew through that. It gums up your needle and makes a big old mess. So this is the sew-in Velcro and about four inches of that. So first thing we're going to do is kind of finish up my front piece and I did the embroidery on it and I stabilized my fabric. I ironed some of the interfacing onto it. I used a piece of poly mesh and a piece of cutaway to stabilize. 
and I've already cut away one of my stabilizers, the cutaway, and now I need to trim away the poly mesh. So I just thought I'd show you a trick on how I do that. Um, I'm going to take my scissors and normally you go into it, you know, like this, and you're going to start cutting. When you're trimming away from something, if you will turn your hand over and see how my palms are up, I'm going to go in and you trim with your palms facing up. And that way the cutting blade is going away from your project. And so I just... And I'm not trimming away the interfacing. That's going to stay. Um, I'm just trimming away this poly mesh. But see how I'm trimming it with my palms facing up. And it's just a real easy way. And you don't have to worry about cutting that bottom fabric or your design. And just get that all the way around. Okay, so that's done. So now... I need to construct my back piece so I'm going to take my two back pieces and put them right sides together and I'm going to sew them together with that half inch seam allowance but I'm going to do a long basting stitch so I'm not going to do a regular stitch length. I'm going to increase my stitch length up to about four, four and a half, use a half inch seam allowance, and base that. So when I'm done doing that, I will be back. Okay, so you can see I have stitched this, the two backs together with a half inch seam allowance, and I've pressed that seam allowance open. And I just basted it together. I set my stitch length about four and a half, I think. And I've left my thread tails on both ends because I'm going to have to take that basting stitch out when I'm done. So you, if your machine has the scissor cutter, you don't want to use the scissor cutter for that. You want to leave those tails there. And now I'm going to take my zipper and I'm just going to lay it right side down. So the teeth part and the pull part are going to be down. And that's why I took that half inch seam allowance is so that zipper lays right on top of that. So I can just center it over that seam allowance. And my zipper pull and my zipper end are extending past the pillow, the fabric. And then I just take, this is a trick that my mom taught me years ago. And this is about the only way I can insert a zipper. I do not like zippers, but I can do it this way. So I'm going to tape it down, and you just make sure you're centered over that opening or that seam, and just tape it. And in several places so that it'll hold it good. And I'm just using scotch tape. And then once I have it taped down, I can take it to the sewing machine and stitch it down. And when I'm going to go back to a regular stitch length and I'm going to put the zipper foot on my machine and I'm just going to sew down and then across and then back up. And that's going to attach my zipper. And um, you could use, like if you don't have a zipper foot, you could move over to the edge. But I do want to get fairly close to the zipper. So I'm going to use my zipper foot to stitch that. Okay, I stitched down my zipper. And I've tried to zoom in the camera here so you can see kind of what I did. I started on the end that has the zipper pull. Okay, and I just set my zipper foot, I'm trying to get my hand out of the way, um, up next to the zipper, and I had my needle not all the way on the edge of the foot. I just came to the inside of that foot. You don't want to sew right up next to that zipper, because then you get it too tight, and you can't unzip your zipper. So I just let the foot kind of guide against that seam, but I did have my needle in a little bit. And um, so then I just stitched down, and then you want to go all the way down, and then I'm hoping you can see this in the camera. Nope, right there. Right there. Okay. So I came down, and then across, and then back up. And that's all you have to do. And then I did... Okay. So you can see I removed the tape. 
and got most of it out. And now I need to get rid of the basting stitches. So easiest way for me is just take a seam ripper and just go up in there and start pulling those out. And you do have little thread tails that you can get rid of. So just remove the basting stitch the best way that you can. And see, I'm using the, saw that on the video, you put the little red nub down, and that's supposed to help you go through those stitches easily. Okay, so I'm going to finish doing that, and then I'll come back. Okay, got my basting stitches removed and picked all the little threads out of them. And see, now I can open up my zipper and see the end with the zipper stop, that's the end that I stitched across, so if I accidentally go all the way, it's not going to go off of my fabric. It's going to stay within my pillow. But I can open it easily. Now I'm going to lay the back piece down, lay the front piece on top of it, and I'm going to trim my corners, round my corners. But I'm going to show you this. I decided on this pillow, I'm going to do it a little bit differently. On this pillow, I have the zipper going basically left to right, and so when I set my pillow down, I can see the zipper pull, and I don't know that that's that big of a deal, but it bothers me. So what I'm going to do on this pillow is I'm going to make the zipper go up and down, and so that way the zipper pull will be down here at the bottom, so when you set the pillow down, you won't see the zipper pull. So I'm going to turn it this way. So my zipper pull is down here, and that'll be the bottom of my pillow. Make sure I have the bottom of my pillow down here. And I'm going to lay those right sides together. And then what I do, whoops, I should have got it. I have this little top <laughs> to a canning jar. And that's what I use to round my corners. And so, let me pull it over here, more in the middle so you can see. I just line up the edges and then just draw. And I do this on the front and the back at the same time so each corner will line up with each other. So I'll just draw those on there. And then I trim them with my scissors. And then I'm going to stitch all the way around. But first, you can't forget to open your zipper. So I'm getting ahead of myself. So I'm going to go ahead and draw all those. And then you can take your rotary cutter or your scissors, whatever, and just trim that corner. And yes, my interfacing is a little bit short. It didn't cover up that whole pillow. That's okay. Okay. Now, before you stitch this together, you have to unzip your zipper. Get that zipper down here in the middle so that you can turn it right side out when you're done. So, now where I have opened my zipper, I'm going to take just another piece of tape and just tape it shut up there just to help hold it. Now, I'm going to place the pillow front on top of my back. But I'm going to kind of turn this around so y'all can see. This is actually, when I shut this zipper, this is going to be the bottom of my pillow down here. So when I lay my pillow front on top of it, I've got to make sure that the bottom is down here. So I'm going to lay this right sides together, and this is going to be the bottom of my pillow, and this is the bottom of my front. 
So I'm going to lay that down like that. And then you could pin your pieces front and back, right sides together. Um, if you need to, I don't, I just kind of fudge it. But now I'm going to go to the machine and I'm going to stitch all the way around with a quarter inch seam allowance. Okay, so you can see I've stitched all the way around. And what I do on my corners so that it turns nice and smooth and you have a smooth corner, you're supposed to, whenever you're turning right side out and you have that curve, you're supposed to notch that curve. Well, I just take my pinking shears and I trim that curve with my pinking shears. And that way it puts those notches in there automatically. And you just have to do it on the four corners. And I've already done that. And now that I've stitched all the way around my pillow, I can go ahead and cut these ends off. My, you just double check and make sure your zipper pull is inside that pillow. You don't want to cut that off. And I use my not so good scissors to do this because you're cutting through that polyester zipper. And these are my scissors I use to trim my twine and stuff like that. So cut that off and then you just turn it right side out because your zipper is open. And then you would take it to the iron and press it really good. And I don't know if y'all can hear, my iron is making weird noises today. It's behind me, and it's making some really weird noises. And I really hope it's not about to go out. Okay, and then you press it and all. And if this was a pillow for inside your home, you'd be done. You would just have to stuff your pillow form up in there. But I want to add that strap onto the back of my pillow so my pillow doesn't blow off my rocking chair. So what I'm going to do now, I will press that, but I'm going to take that piece of fabric, it was 3 inches by 21, and I'm going to fold it right sides together, and I'm going to sew it together with a half inch seam allowance. And when I do that, I'll come back and show you how I'm going to turn it right side out. Okay, so I have my strap sewn together with the half inch seam and now I'm going to show you how I'm going to turn it. I'm going to use this little fast turn tool. It comes in a set with like six different sizes. Um, mine's kind of old. It's probably about 20 years old. Um, and it only came with five sizes, but the new set comes with six sizes for your different size tubes that you have to turn right side out. And you just take your tube and slide it up inside your fabric, push it down on there, and then fold the end over the tube. Take your little spring wand here, slide it up in there, you twist it, and see the end comes up through the end of your fabric, and then you just pull and pull it out. And voila, it's turned right side out. It makes turning, and then you just twist this the other direction, and it comes off the end. But it makes turning these tubes so much easier. And so we're going to do, I just think they are handy to have. And they are a little expensive. The set for all six of them is like $60. So what we're going to do is if you want a set, let me know, and you'll get a 30% discount on them. And so it makes them about $42, and I can order them for you. So just let me know if you want a set, because I think they are very handy to have. Now, what I'm going to do, the reason I sewed this tube together with that half inch seam is because I want to press that seam allowance open and I can actually use the tube to do that also. I just start it with that seam allowance open and I can slide that tube back up in there and then I can just press on that seam allowance and it helps open that seam allowance helps to keep the seam allowance open and I can just press right on this tube all the way down. And so I'm going to do that and then I'll be back. Okay, I got my tube, I have my tube pressed 
and I went ahead and I turned under just a little bit on each end turned it under to the inside and pressed that really good and now I need to figure out how I'm going to attach the velcro so you know your strips are going to overlap each other like that so you need to take your velcro and you'll have doesn't matter which one but put one strip on the inside here and so I'm just gonna pin that on and then it's going to overlap on this side so you put the other piece on this side so one piece is going on the side that doesn't have the seam and then the other piece is going on the side that does have the seam and that way they will overlap each other like that and then I'm just gonna go back to the sewing machine and what I'm gonna do is just top stitch this whole strap so I'm gonna start here go across go all the way down across the other side and back up so it's just gonna stitch all the way around um, to sew this velcro on and when I do that across the top here it's going to sew the velcro on and it's gonna sew that opening shut um, kind of at the same time so I'm gonna top stitch all of that and then I will come back and we'll attach it to the pillow So all I need to do now, I've got the Velcro attached to my strap. I just found the center of my pillow here. The zipper is open. Found, folded the strap in half. Found the center of that. And I'm just going to lay that right close to the zipper teeth there. And then I'm just going to stitch that on. And then that will wrap around the arm of my rocking chair or if you're going to put it on a swing or whatever you're going to attach it to so it won't blow away. So I'll get that stitched on and I'll stuff it and I'll come back and show you what it looks like. Okay, I finished. I sewed the strap on and stuffed the pillow form down in there and they're ready to put outside but before I put them outside I am going to spray them with this scotch guard um, and that way that'll just kind of help them stay clean and if they do get dirty I can just um, take the pillow form out and throw them in the washing machine and wash them but also with the zipper and being able to take the pillow form out I can just store them flat so um, once fall is over I can make me some Christmas pillows that I can put out there on the rocking chairs and store these flat until next year so I hope you enjoyed the video it was fun to do and um, maybe it inspired you to make you some pillows because they are fun thanks